一道是，滚滚滚滚滚，我怒气冲冲冲冲，就不可苦恼，不可。咪咪哇啦，一声大。What's going on guys, Super Savage 789 here, bringing you guys a video on today we're doing what if Bardock and Gine went to Earth, part 8. In the last part, we covered some of the events on Namek, and how they go with a much larger group. Nappa ended up getting betrayed by Vegeta, leading to him joining Frieza for power. As for the others, they got their potentials awakened, leading to Gine beating up Vegeta. We left off with Earth's warrior showing up to Namek, which is where we'll pick up from. After the gravity training, the four involved all got big increases due to the intense gravity. So before we get to the actions, let's discuss power levels, which are Bardock, 787,250 Kakarot, 421,875 Trunks, 92,306 Tenshinhan, 125,625 Bardock will tell Trunks and Tenshinhan to tend to the injured prince as he approaches Nappa. Yamp should question where Kakarot is, and Tenshinon explains, stating how he went on ahead to go and get the Dragon Balls back. Bardock and Nappa would begin to fight, with Bardock pulling his punches to avoid killing the brute. He asks him what he's doing attacking his brethren for seemingly no reason. Nappa shouts that Frieza opened his eyes, and revealed to him Vegeta's true nature. To him, he's no more than a lapdog. At this, Bardock calls him an idiot. Frieza doesn't care about Nappa at all, even less than Vegeta does. All Frieza saw was an opportunity to have a loyal soldier he can manipulate to do his dirty work. And clearly, he succeeded. Nappa shouts that this isn't true as he throws another punch at Bardock. After catching the blow, Bardock asks Nappa what would Frieza do if he found out he failed. Nappa fails to speak as he ponders this, knowing that the answer would be his death. Bardock tells Nappa that it isn't too late to make things right. If he comes to them now, they can all unite and defeat Frieza. Then Nappa can do whatever he'd like. If killing Vegeta is on that list, then so be it. So reluctantly, Nappa would join back up with our heroes. Raditz would ask his father for a sensor bean who'd sweat drop, confessing that they used them all during training. This would leave Raditz somewhat annoyed that his injuries are still present. So Vegeta and Raditz would have to be carried by Bardock and Gine as they all leave to go find Kakarot. They'd find Kakarot chuckling to himself at the ship. Yamcha approaches Kakarot, asking him what's so funny. Realizing that this isn't Kakarot, Bardock shouts for Yamcha to get away from him. Before he can react though, Ginyu and Kakarot's body backhands him to the ground. He still managed to get the body change onto the Saiyan, with his power level here being 107,813. So he's still below his original power level, though only slightly. Bardock tells everyone that he'll deal with this, but Maki tells him no. She's got this. She leaps forward, telling Ginyu that he took the wrong body, because she's number one. The duo begin to fight, being almost even in terms of strength. Maki would have the advantage though, thanks to her martial arts prowess as well as her strength continuously rising due to being Saiyan, as well as having her potential unlocked. Maki would be both confident and cocky, asking Ginyu to give her some kind of challenge. This would annoy Ginyu, however he knows better than to body change into a weaker body. Using the scouter, he looks around for a new one though. Realizing what he's doing, Bardock raises his power above Kakarot's, making Ginyu realize he needs to change. He fires a body change at Bardock, which Kakarot jumps in the way of, getting his body back. Before Ginyu can change again, Bardock snaps his neck. Due to his wounds, Kakarot still needs to be placed inside the healing chamber. Vegeta remarks that he needs healing more than Kakarot does, but no one takes note of this due to his treacherous nature. With the Dragon Balls set, they prepare to summon Purunga, however they need the password. Luckily enough, Kargo and Dende show up with their potentials unlocked, showing their new power to heal on Reddit. They're reluctant to heal Vegeta, however Bardock tells him to do it. When Vegeta gets up, he punches Nappa clean in the face, telling him to learn his place in the world, or next time, he won't be so lucky. Bardock would then tell Dende and Kago their wishes. They summon Purunga and wish for Piccolo to be revived and brought to Namek. With their final wish, they attempt to revive Krillin, however Purunga would vanish, revealing Guru's death. Maki asks if one of the Namekians could heal her brother, which they agree to. As Maki and Dende go to leave, a large magenta blast cuts off their escape. Frieza stands there, enraged that his dream of immortality has now been stolen from him. At least he can vanquish all the monkeys in one place though. Being the most enraged at Frieza, Nappa charges at him, throwing a barrage of attacks at him which seemingly do nothing. Frieza wraps his tail around Nappa's throat and tells him that it breaks his heart to see Nappa betray him after he was so kind to train him. He'll be sure to reward his service with a slow death. Frieza then breaks Nappa's neck and drops him to the ground. 
Noting all the powers, Frieza decides to transform into his second form, asking who is next. Bardock states how this wasn't in his plans, making Frieza laugh, who then begin walking forward slowly, eyeing up who to attack next. Everyone is frozen in fear as they await Frieza's next move. That is, until Roshi steps up. He states how he just needs to hold out for Kakarot to show up. He can do that if need be. Before anyone could protest, he would charge at Frieza, who charges back, his head lowered so his horn can stab him. In a stroke of luck, or maybe even skill, Roshi ducks underneath and lands a kick to Frieza's face. It was a weak one, but a kick nonetheless. Remember, I got the manga's timeline, and in that timeline we see Roshi dodging hits on much stronger people. Since he's been training, I don't think it's out of the ordinary to assume he can do this. Roshi and Frieza would then begin to fight. By now I feel like his potential unlock, as well as the others, will be nearing the end. Their power levels would be Yamcha, 292,626, Gine, 476,513, Maki, 941,912, Raditz, 1,142,880, Roshi, 222,866. Unfortunately for Roshi, his stamina ain't exactly the best, meaning it'd give out right before getting horn-stabbed at a separate moment. His body would then be thrown to the side and resumed dead, however Kago and Dende would be quick to heal him, as well as Nappa. Bardock, Raditz, and Maki would all rush in and begin to fight against Frieza, which would allow them to get quite a few good blows onto the Tyrant. So to combat this, he'd enter his third form, allowing him to regain control of the fight once more. Frieza would proceed to use his crazy finger beams onto the trio, causing some severe damage onto them. The one who would take the most damage would be Bardock, receiving a death beam straight through the gut. Before Raditz and Maki can meet the same fate, a weighted cape and turban would be thrown in the way. Piccolo shows up, much stronger than in canon, as well as with a new technique under his belt. Frieza and Piccolo begin to fight once more, with them being on par, surprising everyone. It allows Dende and Cargo to focus their attention on Bardock since his injury is quite critical. Realizing he's being tested, Frieza would proceed to enter his final form. Piccolo would combat this by showing off the Kaioken, attacking Frieza with a barrage of blows. The duo began fighting with both of them increasing their strengths through the fight. While they fight, Bardock could be finished healing as well as Kakarot. They all realize that despite Piccolo's new strength, he won't be able to defeat Frieza, so they begin to formulate a plan on how to go about defeating him. That's when Maki would get an idea. She rushes in the battle, telling Piccolo to swap over. While the Namekian tries to argue, Maki kicks him away, which gets her gut punched hard by Frieza. Piccolo gets back up, ready to rush off and continue fighting, when Bardock tells him to wait. Maki told him that Piccolo had the technique he was saving to let him be the strongest, separate from the Kaioken. A lights a bulb in the Namekian's head as he realizes the Makan Kosa Po is the answer. He has something to buy him time as he places his fingers to his forehead, beginning to charge up the technique. Kakarot, Bardock, Raditz, Nappa, and Vegeta would then all rush into battle. While the Saiyans attacking him, Frieza would begin to feel overwhelmed, leading to him needing to begin raising his power. He begins to bat the Saiyans around, deciding to take some casualties. The first one to fall in combat is Nappa. Frieza's fist through his heart, Nappa smiles while coughing up blood. He grabs Frieza and tells him they're going out together, self-destructing in a bright light. It's ultimately futile, however, as Frieza laughs it off. Next up to perish would be Vegeta, since he didn't receive the self-inflicted Zenkai, so he'd be much weaker. As he dies, he'd still give a speech, which motivates the other three to continue going. While they would keep fighting, Frieza is able to body them, as well, leaving them all damaged on the ground. Noticing Piccolo's mark on Kosapo, Frieza rushes in to stop him. Yamcha, Roshi, and Gine all rush at him to stop him, however, it isn't long for them to also be on the ground, bloodied and bruised. Of all hope lost, Piccolo decides that he needs to release the technique prematurely. That is until Trunks steps in the way. Frieza laughs, asking what the Saiyan spawn is going to do. Run along now and die with the rest of his race. Trunks and Asuma battle stands. He declares that he's made up his mind. He will take a life if he has to. Trunks would charge at Frieza, his potential beginning to flow out with his resolve. It would take Frieza off guard, allowing Trunks a few good hits before Frieza regains his composure. Using his foot, he grabbed Trunks' head and slams him into the ground, telling him he'll pay for this. That's when he sees a red and purple light originating from behind him. Frieza turns to see Piccolo using Kaioken times 20, as he releases a Super Mark on Kosa Pearl. He tries to dodge, but Trunks grabs his leg to hold him down. Frieza will be carried away as he tries to push against the beam to stop it. He screams as he flies off into the horizon, 
blood spewing to the terrain down below. Everyone begins to celebrate as they all realize they did it. They succeeded. That's until a death beam hits Piccolo in a non-critical place. Everyone turns and sees Frieza stood there, missing an arm, now enraged. He shouts at the pay as he lifts Gine up. Bardock shouts to Frieza to stop, but Frieza only sees red. He closes his hands, causing Gine to detonate into ash. Everyone is left distraught at this death. The four Saiyans would all begin to glow in a yellow light, feeling enraged and saddened at the death of Gine. Letting out a scream in unison, Bardock, Kakarot, Raditz, and Maki all become Super Saiyan. All the Saiyans' powers are way above Frieza, leaving Frieza afraid. He shouts to the Saiyans to get away as he begins throwing key attacks at them. This does nothing as their aura alone is enough to bounce it away. Raditz, Kakarot, and Maki would all rush at Frieza in a feral state of rage. Surprisingly though, Bardock is the one who's able to keep his composure, at least a little bit. He asks Yamcha, Roshi, Trunks, and the two Namekian children to wait for a moment. When he gives the signal, take everyone injured and leave. Though reluctant, they do listen. Bardock would fly over to the others to see them barely able to form fists, hitting Frieza as if he were a ragdoll. If his biology wasn't tailored to survival, he would die it on the first blow. Bardock shouts for his kids, but they're unable to even register the sound of their father. With a solemn look on his face, Bardock would knock his kids out, leaving their bodies to fall limp. He then looks over to the others and shouts to them to escape. As they rush in and grab the trio, Freeze would take the opportunity. He forms a supernova and throws it at them, which Bardock notices. He kicks it away, but it impacts the core of the planet, making it even more catastrophic. Bardock would begin to beat into Freezer, holding his punches to not tear him apart in a single attack. Bardock's power level is well over a billion, so obviously Freezer is outmatched, especially without an arm. Meanwhile, I still think King Kai would execute the same plan with Porunga and Shenron to revive everyone and teleport everyone who isn't Bardock and Freezer to Earth. Having Freezer crumpled on the ground of a dying planet, Bardock stands over him, having Freezer at his mercy. The Saiyan raises up his hands, forming a key blast to kill him. But then he hesitates. I've been dreaming of this day for over two decades. It's been my sole drive, deciding my every decision off of it. But now that I'm here, I don't want this. Maybe Gohan had a point. Bardock could then begin to leave. Frieza tries to muster the key to attack Bardock, but it doesn't even phase him. He simply flies off to leave Namek, his quest for revenge completed. Even if Frieza isn't dead, Bardock's desire to kill him had died. Maybe that was good enough. Anyways guys, that's what we're going to leave off this series for right now. If you enjoyed it, why not hit a like button as it supports the channel and lets me know you want to see a part 9. This series is a long one, and we've barely gotten halfway, but it is definitely one of my favourites. That's why I've already finished scripting it. So, I really hope that you guys are enjoying it as well. And uh, yeah, bye!